Hello, Kenku. So, today I wanted to talk about conventional wisdom. Uh, the examples are going to really be about the ideas of uh, what you put your heart into, what you set your mind on, affects how you hear things, how you see things, visualizing what you want to happen and it will come to pass. All of those very frou-frou ideas of be positive, do what you're going to do and the world will work out, all those sorts of things that, that are about that mindfulness that drives you to a certain destination. And so that's kind of what, what the examples are going to be about, but really the core of this is about that unconventional wisdom. So uh, Thursday, uh, just a handful of days ago, uh, I had two different campaigns, long-term campaigns, come to an end. Uh, each of them were over a, a year and a half. One of them was coming up towards like year three quarters, something like that. But two, two long-standing campaigns just came to a close on the same exact day. And that's not the first time that's happened. Um, I didn't check the exact dates, but I do know I made a different sending Kenku about this. But uh, beginning of 2022, I believe I had three different campaigns come to a close within two to three weeks uh, of their, their epilogues, their final battles, all that stuff overlapping. So clearly, this is a thing. Despite the fact that games go for different times, they have different skip days, they have uh, different pushes, games are coming to a close at the same time. And non-coincidentally for this past Thursday, that was both the, the final sessions for those groups before uh, I would have to take pretty much an entire week off for most of my games for Gen Con, uh, as Gen Con takes a lot of time and also it takes up those days. So. I knew that I was like wanting to bring the games to a close uh, if I could before Gen Con. That way we wouldn't be moving towards some big conclusion and then having to take a week off, maybe take two weeks off. Like that's not something I wanted to do. Sorry for the jump cut, just had to pass somebody and wanted to give them respect. So uh, yeah, didn't want to take, take a week or two off and then have to come back and try and finish up that that very climactic conclusion to those very long games so like knowing of what i had coming like deep set in me was this idea that at least one of these games is coming to a close and that naturally kind of pushed me to really like match pace and bring the, the the other one to a close as well like had they been in complete isolation they would not have been going to end on the same exact day like like, that, that is not ran, random coincidence. The more times this happens, it's more proof, but like, the chances that these completely disparate games, these disparate stories are, are syncing up all the time, that's because that's where my mind is. That's like, whether I'm wanting to deliberately finish the game, I have it in my head that conclusions are coming, endings are coming, and because I have that in my mind, the games naturally get funneled in that direction. As an opposite example, or kind of similar, uh, I did just start another campaign, and that campaign, uh, we are going to be going through a bunch of vintage modules, a bunch of old classics, things from, you know, first edition, second edition, advanced Dungeons and Dragons, uh, maybe some, you know, third edition stuff, but we're going through older modules and we're doing it at a above speed pace. So the players don't have a whole bunch of time to, to devote to D&D, but they really want to play. So we're only meeting every other week and we have like, you know, a big list of modules we want to play through. And so we're in our first module and we've only had three sessions, I think, yeah, we've had three sessions and we are in the dungeon of, uh, against the cult of the reptile god. And with that, like, I don't expect this module to go another two sessions. Like, if we, we get another two sessions out of it, you know, that'd be great, but we are hammering through it. Um, 
the uh, the village that we start off in, like you could spend four or five sessions just investigating the village, and we did that in two sessions, and then immediately zipping off. And the idea is we want to hammer through as much D and D as possible. Like every moment that these guys are playing, they want to play, which is fantastic. But with that, I am now structuring the games as if they're one shots. Typically, I run games in these, you know, big sprawling sandbox. Do what you're going to do. The story will follow. Whether you know, whether it's false leads and dead ends, or or obscuring the path to what where you're going, I follow with with a very roaming story. But in this case, because they there's much fewer sessions, and there's this intentionality of wanting to play as much as possible and get through as much as possible. I'm actually structuring those sessions like a one shot, which is like, it's forcing me to like, okay, I have one or two points that I want to hit by the end of the session. I absolutely have to get us to this, this particular item, this reveal, this, this key to open up the next part of the story. And because of that, because I have that intentionality, it, it's, it's been happening. Like we are doing something, something gets wholly accomplished as opposed to the more relaxed game I typically do, the more free form, I've said this, but yeah, they're, they're, it's a very different feel and it, it, it's the feeling of that deliberateness of I am making sure and you can kind of see that as railroading. You could kind of see that as, you know, this, this heavy guiding hand. You can see it as assisting the players uh, to get what they want. There's a bunch of different ways you can interpret what I'm doing and with their positive neg negative connotations, that's all depending on the beholder. But in the end, I am doing something to ensure something different happens. My my mindset is affecting how the game gets, gets played different than every other game that I've run. And so this idea, like, yes, my perspective, my goal, the thing that I am intentionally keeping forward in my head is then affecting how things play out. And, you know, those are both examples of these very widespread, like, over the course of multiple sessions, over the course of campaigns. But this idea is also very isolating. Like, in, like, like the intentionality, the visualization, the focus can also affect singular sessions, singular combats, singular encounters, or even just singular ideas. So I have a habit of kind of fluctuating how difficult my games are, how difficult the sessions are. Sometimes they are very easy. Um, players walk through combat encounters. They, you know, just blast through bandits or reek through uh, entire battalions of minions. And other times they are raked across the coals. It is, it is a grueling task to get to the end. And yeah, the fluctuation of difficulty is there of like how, like how difficult the monsters are. But there's also the fluctuation of things that come into Game Master Fiat. My interpretation of the rules or the rules calls or adjustments I'm making to tell the story I want to tell. There are some times where like, players might, might make mistakes in what they say they want to do versus what they actually do or things like that, and I am super forgiving. Like, I have in my head that this is supposed to be an easy moment. This is supposed to, you know, have momentum moving forward, and all of those, like, mistakes or all of those decision-making processes, I just smooth over because I'm trying to develop that sense of, of you guys are rolling through. And other times, when I have it stuck in my head that, a particular monster or a big bad villain or whatever is supposed to be difficult, all of a sudden the rules start to grind against the players. And things are very difficult because you're having to work through the nuances of mechanisms that other times I would just kind of brush away. 
And once again, that can be interpreted different ways. That can be interpreted as me, you know, developing the narrative and developing a sense of, of, of flow that I want. And I am do, like I'm I am building the world around the players to assist them in understanding where they are in the narrative. The other interpretation is I am an inconsistent jerk that is not just maintaining a single level of difficulty. And once again, both of those are different ways to interpret the situation with their own connotations. Um, I do have players that will defend me against myself whenever I use phrases like like I'm uh, an inconsistent jerk or something like that, of, of I'm doing my job of making sure that things that are meant to be difficult are, and uh, I, I am making sure that uh, the rules are being maintained and, and you know, there, there can be runaway power for player characters where once they get a, a couple certain things, they're like, nothing can stop them and I'm making sure that there are still those challenges and like, my players are very wonderful in how they understand what I'm doing and I appreciate that, but there's still the, those varying ideas of, of my mood, my expectations, the thing that I'm trying to visualize is then having an effect on the players and how they experience the game. And that is all coming from inside my head. That is not coming from a script. That is not coming from the rules. That is coming from my expectations of the story that is going to be told that day. And all of a sudden the players are having to adapt to it's almost like the players have to adapt to the soundtrack of a particular episode of a show where you always have the episode of the show where like, oh, this is going to be the slightly horror themed episode, or this is going to be the goofy episode. And my visualiz visualizations, my expectations, whether or not I'm deliberately doing it to the players, whether I'm making that as a deliberate choice, the things that I have like just got set in my heart, in my brain of, of what's going on, the players are go having to like pick up the cues of that soundtrack, despite the fact that in the TV episode, the, play, the, the, the characters can't hear the soundtrack, and yet there is that feeling that there's something ominous going on. And like the players also cannot hear the soundtrack of what is going on in my head, but they're having to pick that up. I realize that with like virtual tabletops and stuff, like there is the audio, that there's the jukebox, the soundboard that like, I use as much as I can. So that could be the tell of what I'm doing. That's an entire separate just concept. But yeah, so whether it's the long standing campaign and like where my expectations, my visualizations of where I want my work to be affecting where campaigns go or just my expectations of what I want a particular session, a particular encounter, a particular moment to feel like. All of those have these subtle cues that then affect how I make my calls, how I develop story, how I build things forward for my players. And if I were more cognizant of that, as I'm attempting to be making this video, it won't be as random. Like as long as I'm cognizant that those, those feelings and those drives will affect how I make calls at the table and how I will improvise narrative at the table, really that is a demand upon myself to be more aware of what I'm visualizing or what I'm worried about or what I'm trying to build towards. Like if, I, if I'm cognizant of that, it will have less random effects on the players, which should be what is desired. Like, yes, the dice are random. Yes, the players don't know everything, but like the players shouldn't have to deal with other sources of randomness because that's not good for them. Like the stability of the table, the stability of understanding and being able to read me as an individual is very much how they have control and how they have comfort and how, 
how that offset of power of my control of the story versus their con control of the story is maintained. So yeah, if only I had been more aware of the conventional wisdom of if you be positive in the morning and smile in the mirror, you'll have a more positive day. Or, you know, think happy thoughts and, and, and seek out your dreams and, and they will come to fruition. All those kind of very like paint them on the kitchen walls types ideas. They matter. And whether I, like, whether I acknowledge it or not, they do have an effect. Whether I acknowledge it or not, they will be affecting how things happen. So... Yeah, that's my sending, Kenku. Whether you like it or not, unconventional wisdom will hold merit. You don't have to listen to it all the time, but don't discount it entirely.